I got the horse right here. The name is Paul. Hello, racing fans, and welcome back to another edition of Handicapper's Corner, brought to you by the Derby Bar and Grill. I'm Mike Heads, and along with Randy Golding today from the Daily Racing Farm, Drew Forrester on assignment. Uh, we're, we're very happy to have Randy Golding, a longtime Daily Racing Farm correspondent. You see his selections in the front of the, the Racing Farm uh, in your DRFs, and uh, great to have you here. Thanks for coming, and I understand you were in Edmonton uh, last week for the Canadian Derby. Yeah, it was a great trip, and I just want to say it's nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes. Uh, it was a great trip, a great derby. Edison was just dominated the race, and... Uh, I believe he's going to run at Canterbury for yeah. his next start on the turf, which I don't know if that's the right move. Uh, it's a mile on the turf. Yeah, Robertino seems to want to stay away from here for some reason. Uh, he's he everywhere, he but he just see. But, but it was great to see Dave and Sylvia's horse run so oh, well. Remember to breathe. Remember to breathe. Tough trip. He had a rough trip, uh, partly due because I guess the Ryan Pacheco, the rider, was getting stung in the face by rock clods or dirt clods. But he ran a big race to run second, and I talked to Sylvia this morning, and he came out of the race in great shape. Cool. He'll be in the BC Derby coming up September 14th. Excellent. So uh, we did have a couple of stakes races last week at, at, at Hastings, and we're going to touch on those before we get into our Friday selections. Uh, the first race, and here we sprung the gate. There was a field of five in the opener. It was the newest Minster uh, going six and a half furlongs. We had the two-year-olds and uh, Party Pooper uh, for uh, the North American Thoroughbred Company was on the outside. He's getting a nice trip. That's your eventual winner. Sat a nice spot. Uh, Merlot was down on the, or actually Moe Can Do It was on the inside. Mo Merlot was kind of blowing the turn a little bit there. And the speedy My Secret Cause was out there on the lead. That was a good race by Party Pooper. And oh, it's going huge. into, you know, he looked good going into the race. He ran really well. Didn't he show that he showed the signs when uh, he ran second at Jacuzzi Bob in that three and a half furlong race, and he was closing so well at the end. And he had trouble. Yes, you know, he, he did. He overcame trouble, and then you figured going six and a half, he was going to be tough, and he he won like a good like the favorite should. Yeah, yeah Alex Persona still the tight lines here, just rolling by my secret cause. Uh, a half and 46 and two, very comfortable fractions. But here comes old Derek made a good move for uh, the Carmichaels and uh, Dave and Sylvia Gregory. He oh, he ran a huge race. He got, huge. if you watch the start, he got left. Yeah, cold. He, did get he got left. cold left and uh, made a big move on the outside and uh, finished full run. They, I think he's got a future. He does. Both of them do. Yeah. Like Party Pooper had things nice on the head end, but you know, a little green down the stretch, but that's to be expected for a horse just making his second lifetime start. So that was very impressive, though. Congratulations to the North American Thoroughbred Company. Alex Pistono, Party Pooper, big run, but uh, O'Derek, too. I mean, we're going to yeah. see O'Derek run some good, good. That, that, that's back to back top races from O'Derek. Yeah, yeah, they're pointing him to the Ascot. Yeah, the that's the big race. A mile and a 16th, and the way he ran there, he sure he looks like he'll appreciate the mile and a 16th. And in race number two, we had the Phillies, and uh, well, so Dave and Sylvia Gregory ran second in the uh, opener. They're going to get the money here in race number two, but it was a good race. It was actually a tough race. There was a lot of bumping going on in this one. There was a field of six going six and a half furlongs in the Hard Rock Casino. You'll see the newcomer on the outside here, uh, the five horse uh, bought by the Copper Water Thoroughbreds, uh, showing very good speed under Richard Hamill for trainer Craig McPherson. Uh, source was purchased uh, back east. I, I believe it came on Miss Hatter. Then Saffron was sitting the trip uh, in second, and uh, Bullet was down on the inside. And you'll watch uh, out the three and four path of uh, Seedle Surprise and Ambleside Park are both kind of bumping. Yes, and that, there was an inquiry, and, and you know people have different views about the results. Uh, I kind of, of agree with the, the steward's decision. I, I think uh, you know there was bumping, but part of it was caused. You know, Ryan had to move his horse out exactly. a little bit to her out his horse out a little bit, and, and they bumped again down the stretch a couple of times. So, but it was a big race, and the, the big you know who was the biggest surprise? Uh, Sylvia Gregory, the trainer, was shocked that this horse won. He did. It's like their third or fourth best two-year-old, and. Uh, she was just yeah. told, first she's, she's watching the race, she said, man, we might get third. Oh, wait a minute, we might get second, we're going to win it. <laughs> you know, yeah. and she was very thrilled about it. Yeah. See, no racing room really, they're bumping still at the head yeah, of the right, lane. They're yeah. in the three and four path. The eventual winner comes through is in, in the three path here. And that's here impressive. Surprise. It's, it's impressive game. the way, you know, yes. went between horses uh, for a two-year-old, you know, not intimidated. That's very right. impressive. Yeah, great win for Seedle Surprise. Unlucky loser was Ambleside Park, yes. but uh, still for two very nice fillies. It'll be pointed toward, obviously, towards the fantasy later on in the year. Let's get into the Friday card, 7 o'clock uh, post. Got seven races on tap. Uh, the first race is, we got stakes for you. We got more stakes action. We got the Hong Kong Jockey Club. Uh, 
mile 16th for three-year-old fillies. This will be their final prep before the rich BC Oaks in a couple of weeks' time or three weeks' time. And uh, the obvious horses are the two, Oli's Miss and the three, Dosselina. I'm going to go to Oli's Miss to win it. Uh, I, you know, obviously she doesn't win by much, but she wins. There's no traffic in this race. I just think she's a talented filly. And uh, I know Dosselina ran huge last time, ran a very good time on BC Cup Day. But things are a little tougher with Oli's Miss in the race. There isn't much between them. It'll be 2-3 three or 3-2. Three, and you can you can pick Flatter You or Fire Beauty for third. Either one are interchangeable, but it's it's a two horse race on paper. Absolutely, it's a, definitely a two horse race. And uh, Amadeo Perez on Oli's Miss better keep her within range of Dossalina because if he doesn't, no, it's, she's going to be gone. She ran a huge race last time. I think it was her second time going to mile sixteenth. Big improvement. Right. Uh, fast time. She was hooked for part of it. I don't see any other speed. Do you see any other speed? No, Dawson is going to get the lead. You're right. Uh, and maybe Fire Beauty will go with her. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah actually, Fire, uh, but, Fire Beauty broke. She kind of hopped at the start yeah. in her last start. So she might she might put some pressure. And she's probably better than she looked. That, you know, she did. She was compromised at the start of her last race. And, yeah, and obviously, I mean, they all rode them both last time. It's a really tough decision for, for both, both you know, for Agent Trapper Barabee and Absolutely. Amadeo. I mean, it, well, it's hard. How can, you, how can you go <laughs> off Oli's Miss? I mean, Gosselin has done it once. Oli's Miss has done it every time. You know, that's that's the difference. I went 2 3 and 1 in the opener, and you went uh, 2 3 and 1. You went 2 3 4. Oh, 4. Two, fire three, four. Beauty. Yeah, you yeah, went fire. It doesn't really matter. It's 2 3 or 3 2. It's but, an exacta. Right. Look so. at the price of the exactive and yeah. take it from there. But both Randy and I agree on the two Oli's miss in the opener. On to race number two, uh, the Richmond Derby trial. Obviously the prep for the rich $150,000 BC Derby to be run on September the 14th. Uh, good race. Five, only five of them signed on, but uh, I got to go to Coffee Grinder. I'm, he's got the home court advantage. He's facing tougher horses. You got Solomon Swear coming in for the North American Thoroughbred Corp. You got Tapacero coming in for the Swift Thoroughbreds. They're bringing in nice horses as they continue to. The Shaws had already brought in Distillery, who uh, won last time. You know, against the allowance company. But Coffee Grinder, he's just, I don't know, he's, he's, he's the real deal. He, I, I know he hasn't beating a lot, but I think he's the real deal. He is the real deal. And, and uh, you know, I was reluctant to pick against him, but I went with Solomon. You did. I did. <laughs> I did, you know, because, you know. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, I know, you can't pick But him. he has really been one of the most impressive three-year-olds we've seen right. here in a long time. Really, it, just every race, he, he just dominates. He hasn't worked in three weeks, which worries me a little bit, but... You know, Craig says he's Craig McPherson. His trainer says he's doing great, and you know, he he's very it's excellent numbers with bringing horses back in this time period. And uh, but I, it, I really like this solemnly swear a bit. I watched his races at Monmouth, and very impressive. His last win, you know, he was he was tested more than once, and he just kept going. Those were, it was six and a half. It was six furlongs, a 92 buyer, which right, is you know, it's back to back 92 buyers, which are the best numbers in the field. And when he went um, a mile into 70 for a $50,000 optional race, he won by 17 and three quarters lengths, yeah. I believe it was. So we know he can get the distance. Yeah, he he's, he, too. And he's a small, he's, he, he's a perfect horse for this track. He's not, he's not big. He should be okay with and the We turns. should note that Randy also doubles as a clocker, so he gets a chance to see these horses in the mornings uh, when they train, So you can, you know, which is a big advantage to have Randy on the show. He, you know, he obviously does a lot of work with the daily racing room, but also get, doubles as a clocker, so he's obviously seen Salmley swear in the mornings. I've seen him gallop. I haven't yeah, seen right. him. I, I missed yeah. his work as I was yep. in Edmonton for the mm -hmm. Derby, but I talked to Lisa Russell, other, our other clocker, and, and she gave him a B, you know, 13-2 and two breezing, mm -hmm. so that's a pretty yes. good work. But he's the perfect size for this horse. He is going to be in front. I don't think there's any other. Who's going to go with him? Nobody. Comp, nobody. And so, uh, you know, Troy Taylor is trainer who never is you know, understates every horse he ever has ever trained. He's all right. He says, oh, he's, yeah, oh, yeah, I don't he know. He runs in one. I don't. I don't know if he's that good. But his record is very good. Yeah. And if co this will be a real test for Coffee Grind. This is the yes. first real test. He, I mean, he. Um, He's been facing a lot easier. He's never faced a horse off like this. Off the top, this. Richter Red. I know they're, they're, you know, off the top didn't run well in the Canadian Derby, but right, uh, right. Richter Red's still an allowance type horse. I know yeah. there's not a lot behind him, but that's, that's not right. his fault. That's the way I look at it. It's not really his fault, but his opposition is. I just love the look of him. He's big, lanky. Oh, yeah. But all yeah. the look of a derby and a distance horse. Oh. I, wish, I wish he would have won the Canadian Derby. Oh, he would have won for fun. Yeah. Distillery probably would have won the Canadian Derby yeah. for fun. It, it was a pretty weak. Um, it, you know, in rendition of the Canadian right. Derby, but the horse that won was was, was very nice. powerful. But, but Craig McPherson uh, talking to him about it, they didn't want to shit. They don't want to. The the, the the BC Derby is their target. Absolutely. And you don't want to go to Edmonton and maybe something you know you get a little shipping sickness or whatever. Well, when you're changing tracks, 
you can ruin your chance at the BC Derby three weeks later. And that and and I know they didn't want to do it. They're BC owners. They're running the horses in BC, and uh, yeah, and that's great. The uh, same never with, fault that. The same with the Shaws for yeah. with the Stillery. The Stillery they, this right. is a race. The Derby is the BC Derby is a race that's they want to win. And uh, he was pretty impressive. And he beat who did he beat? Remember to breathe. Yeah. And who, who won ran second big. in the Canadian Derby? That's right. Correct. So. You know that's a horse. I mean, I didn't. I don't have him in my top three, but I wouldn't be surprised if he made, he ran a big race there too. But it, I think it's I think it's really a two horse race between Solemnly Swear and Coffee Grinder. And you know, I won't be shocked if Coffee Grinder beats the horse I picked. No, no and, and 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 vice versa for me. Uh, so Randy went to the one Solemnly Swear. He went one five and three in the Richmond Derby trial. I'm going to go to the five Coffee Grinder, the obvious choice. But uh, I went five one. I put Distillery in the third spot. Went five, one, and two. On to the third race, uh, 12 5, uh, Phillies and mares sprinting six and a half furlongs. Uh, I landed on the two horse closing intentions. I'm going to try her to maybe get a little bit better trip. Amadeo Perez aboard. It uh, looks like the six Kiris gal is going to, as usual, slingshot from the outside and go to the front. The one dream baby will have a little bit of pace to her. Uh, and, and Will Ament might show a little more speed too, so that could play out nicely for the two closing intentions. I, I think I need a little pace help to make her a winner. And I, I think I might get it. So I, I went two, six, and one. And, uh, and it looks like j we did take entries for Monday today, and Quiet Finality showed up in the entry. So it probably it looks like Quiet Finality will scratch for this Friday night race. But uh, I went two, six, and one in the third. I, like? I went with Carrie's gal. She's she's going to get out there. She's yeah. you know she's been right there how many times? Every time she she shows up, she should be the one to catch. Um, I think you could get some pace out. Willamette. Yeah. You know, she has some speed, and she's making her uh, interesting stat, you know, using Formulator for the day the racing right. form, which I love, uh, the Formulator uh, program. 35%, Steve Hansen, claim, second start off the claim, his horses win Wait, like a third, I think 30, it's 35, that's a, that put, that's a huge number. Because usually, you know, training horses, uh, you you know need a start to adjust and to make or make the necessary adjustments after your first start, and and uh, maybe that's why Steve's so successful at it. Yeah, yeah that's a big that's a things. big number. So I, yeah. I'm expecting she didn't fire her first time for him, but she could fire here, and she's capable of winning this race if she runs her best race for right. sure. So, but yeah, I went with Carrie's gal and Dream Baby. I think sitting on a big another a big effort. Gets back with Richard Hamill. I, not, yeah. You know, nothing. No disrespect to Alex Persona, but Richard Hamill seemed to sit her nice, and she ran a big race for Richard. I know last time was a lot tougher with, uh, you know, Hidden Harbor in the race, but uh, you know, I think she's better than that last race. Yeah. Anyway, it's a good race, good betting race. Okay, Randy goes to the six. Uh, Curie's gal over the one. Uh, Dream baby and the five. Will I'm at? I'm going to go to the two. Closing intentions. I went two, six, and one. But a, a good little betting race uh, for. And those Phillies mares, they're, they're good, honest mares. Should be a lot of fun in race three. On to the fourth race. Got some eight thousand dollar claimers going six and a half furlongs. Got eight of them signed on. Got one Philly showing up in the lineup, which makes things a little difficult. The four horse new twist miss uh, for uh, Leaf Nordahl and uh, Mike Anderson. With great works uh, shows up for eight thousand uh, and uh, running against the boys, so it's a little difficult. I went to the three, though, Uncle Clarence. Blinkers off, Richard Hamill, Craig and first, and they've just been, uh, it seems like every time they partner up, they win. And uh, this one's dropping in class, and it might, might be, have a little bit of speed. I like the blinker change. Let's see. i got to try Uncle Clarence to defeat uh, the newcomer, number four, New Twist Miss. New Twist Miss, and the eight, Fashion East, would be my third pick. I, I kind of like three, four, and eight. I can see any of those horses. In fact, when I first did the race, I actually... I went with uh, new a twist miss it because the works race. are good. I thought, but it's a Philly facing boys in her that's very first start. I, I, but she can win it. I, nice know, work, work, 59. Works are good. These, she's by a sire. I think 70% debut sire horses first yeah. times. So that's pretty good numbers. I ended up with um, a dead set though. She, he uh, showed pretty good speed going to mile 16th yeah. in his first start for Pedro Alvarado, who's having. He's having a Phenomenal great year, year as a trainer. He had a good year last year. Yeah, he's made he's, well. he's made a great transition from jockey to yep. trainer. Very good job. And I think um, uh, he'll, he's, he's got the rail. He's got some speed. He, he could he yep. could he could be tough to beat. I re, I like the move blinkers off. It's one of my favorite moves. Mm -hmm. I think a, 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 a I mathematic like professor <laughs> of my, friend of mine at uh, Simon Fraser University did a study one year at Hastings where horses. If you bet every horse that took the blinkers off, you made a profit. But also we noticed that when the blinkers came off a horse, the odds dropped the next time, which means they improved, obviously, for, right. for their second start. Anyway, just yeah, one of my favorite moves, yeah. like you it's mentioned. It's a good angle. It is. Like you you want to notice changes, and that's how 
you'll see a horse will change his form from you know just running whatever fifth 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 you see this equipment change wins and that's why and yeah. trainers notice things and little subtleties and uh, mm -hmm. you need to make changes like that yeah like especially especially a blinkers off a of speed horse is a big it's big, huge they'll get them relaxed. Big they can relax yeah but yeah, I agree with you. You know, I, I like horses shortening up too. Like he, he, here's, he's a, here's, here's a horse that's a per perfect example of a pace casualty, dead, the one horse dead set, uh, going along, had a fast fractions, ran nowhere. I mean, you can get good odds on horses like this when they cut back to six and a half furlongs and, uh, and shorten up. And like you say, uh, it, it, this is a good, you know, a good, and for a hot barn and, uh, you know, Amadeo's gonna hurt your price, but <laughs> yeah, that's all right. That's okay. <laughs> okay, Randy goes to the one horse dead set uh, over the four new twist miss, then the three Uncle Clarence. I went three, four, and eight in the fourth. On to the fifth race, got some $4,000 conditional claimers and onwards of three lifetime. Going six and a half furlongs. I had a lot of trouble with this race. There's 10 of them signed on. Uh, I have no idea what's going to happen in here. This, I, I tried to cross off a few horses, and, and I just, and I, I'm still left with five or six that I could like. I went to the five, no sense of, or what a sense of humor. Uh, I don't know if this horse can still run or not, uh, but, but the horse is getting an easier assignment, getting out of those tough uh, HBPA uh, claiming series races. And uh, I, I, but still the horse has shown not a lot since being claimed. I'm a little concerned about that, but still on the drop, Frank Fuentes has got run out of this horse before, so I, I'm gonna try this horse to maybe get it into a good spot early. I put the three horse Chapel Boy, uh, I love the rider change, and I think he's going to get a good pace. I think this horse is live. I definitely have that horse on any pick four tickets. And I put the six, another class dropper, Hail the Jack. Another one I don't know if it can run here at all in a bull ring, but you must respect the connections, and the horse has got some back class. So, uh, But I had a lot of trouble. I left out Royal Victor. I left out Tribe, Run Stormy Run, Fleming's Beach, one, you know, the Contact Man. It's a good little race. No, it's a good, uh, I, I agree. I, I had a lot of trouble. It's a well matched group yeah it's, it's pretty wide open actually when i first did it i i yeah. kind of i was leaning towards tribe because yeah. i thought well there's going to be some kind of pace here yeah. and but i don't know if he really wants to sprint he you know his best races have been long. going long but he could certainly get up in time and uh, i don't know what the, the seven to two i don't know i don't know if i'd take seven to two on him but yeah because um, yeah, there's a tough right a favorite should be seven to two or four to one in a, in a race like this i went with the uh, royal victor i you know i, I don't yeah, i different. don't see a lot of other speed in the race uh, fleming's beach has some speed mm -hmm. but his best race was his last race where they you know let him sit back and make a one late run so i think i think uh royal victor's gonna get out there all by himself and i got no argument with that no no because it's 10 horse field that's got a lot of con a lot of uh, congestion yeah. sometimes being on the lead you can win just by because exactly. you're staying out of trouble so that's the way i that's the way i, I viewed the race uh, but it's you know chapel boy he's been pretty and, and royal victor's been knocking on the door he's yeah, due like he's, he's overdue he's yeah. been right there at a bunch of races and uh you know toss his race in that eight thousand dollar starter race and you, what right. are you looking at? You're looking at a pretty consistent horse. Yeah. He was overmatched there. He's not overmatched here. I think he's going to the front. I'm expecting him to go all the way, and, and he might be a decent price because, like you say, it's a it's a tough race to to really yeah. single in on any horse in particular. And yeah, we'd like to welcome Sean Sav Savacci. Or I'm not too sure how to pronounce his name. A uh, newcomer here to Hastings. I guess you can tell us a little bit about him. I guess he's been riding in Turkey. That's what I've heard. I don't really know that <laughs> much about him. But, or some, but, yeah. But he's, he's uh, talked to him, uh, Michael Morrison, the steward, uh, one of the stewards at Hastings today, and asked him some background. He's, he's ridden about 250 races in Turkey. I'm not sure how many he's, he's actually won, but he's, uh, you know, he's been working horses here, and good. you know it's, it could be a good addition. We'll, just, yeah. we'll have to find out when, we, when he actually rides in a race. He's looked good on horses working, but it's a big difference, as you know. You know when 10 horses in a, you know, on, a, on a five and a half furlong track, it's, things get a little, you know, you have to make some good decisions out there. But it's, it's great to have him in the room. And so uh, good luck to, to Sean Savacci. But uh, tough race, as Randy and I mentioned. Uh, I've gone to the five. What a, what a sense of humor. It's a good little race, but it, there's a lot of ways to go. Get to down to the paddock, look at these horses. I went five, three, and six. Randy's going to go to the seven, Royal Victory. He went seven. Five or seven, three, and one in in the fifth. On to the sixth race, first half of your late daily double. Uh, Maiden five grand fillies and mares going six and a half furlongs. Uh, big field of eleven here. I see got one waiting to get in. The twelve horse Aber be gone, but uh, I went to the three Miss Rose Parade. Kind of an obvious selection. I uh, went blinkers on last time. Class change. Got beat by D.S. Savannah, who was dropping in class. So I just thought she got beat by a better horse, and or uh, I think she's live in here, and I. And I'm going to give the 11 B remarkable another shot. Was in, did all her own problems last time. She mm -hmm. was impeded badly going into the, in, into the first turn, caused her to lose valuable position, re-rallied to get fifth. But I mean, this horse did all her own 
you know, she was green, or not green, but just, just everything that happened to her, she caused herself. But still, hopefully the 11 hole will keep her out of trouble, and maybe she got enough speed to get in a good spot. And I put the 7 horse, uh, Silver, who, who I thought ran pretty well last time, in for third. Uh, I, I'm kind of on the 3, 11, and 7, but I really like uh, Miss Rose Parade. In I, I think I'm pretty, I made her my best bet in the racing yeah, form. Yeah, she looks like a key, good, maybe a good key in your pick for us. Yeah, sure, her buyer figures are better than the rest of the field. She's got... Right. Reasonable tactical tactical speed, so she should get a good trip breaking from the three hole. Uh, her trainer Tony Cluche does a good job with her horses. They're yep. the live barn. Uh, lots to like with Miss Rose Braid. Uh, I picked uh, Miss Capeaway for Cape second. Away, yeah. You know she's run. She's run back to back runner up. That's good. there's nothing wrong with her no, form. Uh, yeah, yeah. Craig McPherson, how's he doing? Leading trainer by how many? Anyway, yeah. And Razan gallops for him, so it's not not surprising to see Razan Choksi getting a you know a, the yeah, and he, from Craig. And you know he's what he's two for forty six of the meet. Most of the horses horses that he's riding are you know yeah. big long shots. But you know he's actually the I think he's the only jockey in the room that's won a Grade One race, and that was in India. But anyway, really nice kid, and yeah, uh, I, always, I always root for him. And what do you think about Jamilia? Now, that's the one that uh, yeah. she's going to be out there all by herself. Yeah, a little trainer change, maybe a little freshening. Got, I got Phil Hall now, and uh, and uh, I don't know, just something. I don't know. Yeah, just a, a horse that's been out there on the head end. Twenty-one and four is a little crazy. It's crazy, yeah. Uh, that that was, uh, you know, hopefully you can get a twenty-two and two or something. Of course, uh, you know, Amadeo aboard. That's that's a yeah. big plus. So yeah, yeah I, I don't mind the filly. I mean, yeah. I don't. I'm not in love. I I'm, I actually am in love. I'm in love with Miss Rose Parade. And then there's about five or six <laughs> of them right. that are in, interchangeable. That's why I second like at and it. third. So uh, but, I went. But, I yeah. went with um, Zanita Rose for yeah. third. Uh, should move forward. She's had a race. Yeah, been yeah. Off. a little layoff last time. Little layoff coming back. She, that was a good race. You know, her first her first start back, and uh, you know, and it says Sandra Loseth, but we probably know it's her daughter Christine, yeah, Christine yeah. training the horses. Who was uh, has a lot to do with Oli's Miss and uh, the Tracy McCarthy barn. So, uh, I can see her moving forward. Yeah. Enough to get a, a, a slice. You know, part of the exotics. But both Randy and I agree on the three. Uh, Mr. Rosebury. Randy's going to go three, one, and six. I'm going to go to the 311. I'm going to lay the outside. I'm going to be remarkable. Another shot. 311 and 7. We both agree. Miss Rose Braid's really alive in race number 6. On to the 7th and final on the Friday night program. And another skull buster. Uh, kind of a tough uh, way to close it out. Got full field of 12 going a mile and an 8. This is an allowance. Uh, kind of an optional claimer, actually. It's a, it's a starter race. Uh, for horses that have run for 5,000. This year, you can protect the horse, and if you haven't, you got to run for the 5,000 claiming in this race. But uh, I think it's three horses, Randy, uh, between the two vying for glory, who I thought was very good on BC Cup Day, losing to Mark and Ganby. The three, Tamarack Smarty, and the eight horse, of course, Tommy Danziger, a former Canadian Derby winner. Uh, the obvious horse is Tommy Danziger, and uh, Amadeo Perez does resurface on him. Uh, he's a horse that will likely be heavy favorite, not... I could see him winning. He's going to be on my tickets. But I'm, I'm going to just pick the three, Tamarack Smarty. I think this horse is finally going to get a good pace to run into. This horse has got some bogus paces in front of him and just been very unfortunate. I think the switch to Richard Hamill will be really good for Tamarack Smarty. So I'm going to pick him to win it over Tommy Danziger. But I'm a lot, I love them both. And I like Brian for Glory. I think those are your three horses. I went 3 8 2 to close it out. Um, I, Tommy Danziger is the best horse he's in the race. Horse, There's right? no question. He's the best horse in the race. But how long has he been off? It's been a while. Yeah, June. Uh, Since it's he been ran. a while. And uh, he got beat by a few of these last time, too. Tonkett's yeah. uh, Charm. It was a nice horse, so I've left off the but ticket. And, uh, he, it was a rough trip. Yeah. It started at the beginning. It started at the beginning. It started at the, right out of the gate. He, he, anyway, he got off slowly. He had to check. He dropped back. He wants to be closer, and he will be. And he's the best horse in the race. And his trainer, Rob Gilker, does a great job with his horses. And in, in, in this time frame, he has good numbers bringing them back from this right. kind of break. Uh, he, obviously, he's no cinch in this race. So why don't, it's, a, it's a good race. Uh, Tamrex Marty, I picked second, who, yeah, he's going to be flying at the end. And there, should, there could be an, you know, with flying for, for glory, there should be an honest right. pace. And, I, you know, it, talk its charm. I think you got to throw him in there somewhere. He's just he's been... He's a cool horse. He just runs... When he's down for five or 8,000, he's always close to the money. And he's actually jumped up to win for 12, 5, yeah. and 16. And that was, a, a, that was a great ride by Amadeo last time. I mean, he... Talk about getting after yeah. horse to get I up and win. I never thought he was ever going to win. No, and he got him up there. But he's, you know, he, he's good at the distance. Uh, I would definitely have him in my exotics for sure. Anyway, great, great race to yeah, end the card. Excellent race to close it out. So, 
Randy and I agree that it's two, three, and eight, but uh, Randy's going to go to the eight horse. Tommy Danziger to win. He's going to go eight, three, and two. I'm going to go three, eight, and two. Well, that'll do it for our analysis of the Friday night program. Next up on screen will be a quick recap of our Friday night selections. Here are my selections up first. Uh, and back in race number one, I went to the two horse. Always missed. I went two, three, and one. Race number two, another stakes race. Nice to have stakes races on the Friday night program. I went to the five, Coffee Grinder. I went five, one, and two. In race number three, I went to the two, Closing Intentions, two, six, one for me. In race number four, I went to the three, Uncle Clarence over the newcomer, number four, New Swiss Miss in the eight, Fashion East two. In the fifth race, I went to the five, What a Sense of Humor, five, three, six. In the sixth race, went to the three, Miss Rose Parade. We kind of agree that this is probably likely your best bet of the day. Three, 11, and seven, and six. And the seventh and final, went to the three, Tamarack Smarty, and went three, eight, and two. Next up on screen will be Randy's picks. Well, I went uh, similar to Mike. I went with Oli's Miss in the first race. Oli's two, three, four, Oli's Miss, Dosselina, Fire Beauty. Dosselina could take them all the way, though. Uh, yeah. Second race, great race, Solemnly Swear, Coffee Grinder, Tapicero. I, once again, I wouldn't be surprised if Coffee Grinder won the race. Third race, Carrie's Gal. Number one, Dream Baby, Willamette. Fourth, number one, Dead Set. New Twist Miss, the first time starter. Big shot there. And number three, Uncle Clarence. Uh, Royal Victor looks like the only speed in the fifth race. I think he could take him all the way. Chapel Boy second, number one, 1440. Three, Mike and I agree, the best bet of the day, Miss Rose Parade, just so consistent. And, I went with number one, Cape Away, and six, Zanita Roy, Rose in the Triacta. And I just think Tommy Danziger is the best race. He's got a good trainer. Number three, Tamarex Barney, second. And number two, Vine for Glory. All right, that'll do it for this edition of Handicapper's Corner. Like Once again, thank Randy Golding. He's going to be here for the Monday show as well. So uh, thank you, Randy, for for uh, helping out while Drew's out on assignment. My uh, pleasure. It was a uh, yeah, great time. Cool. And uh, great coffee. Great coffee here. They, they got everything that's great here at the Derby. We got great food. If you can't make it out to the races on Friday night, come out here to the Derby Bar and Grill. Uh, of course, they'll have the Hastings on the big screen. Lots of simulcasting. It's uh, a great Saturday, too. We've got Travers Day at Saratoga. On Sunday, it's Long Acres Mile Day at Emerald Downs. Got some local interest in that. And so uh, lots of simulcasting this weekend as well. So please do come out and join us as well. Racing resumes on Monday at 4 o'clock uh, with another seven race program. Well, that'll do it for this edition of Handicapper's Corner. Once again, thanks to Randy. Uh, we'll see you next time here at the Derby Bar and Grill.